Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. This video is hosted on the EEV blog channel thanks to Dave Jones who is giving us uh, smaller YouTubers the chance to reach a wider audience. So if you like it, don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe. You will find a link in the description below. For those who are new to my In The Mail series, it's about cheap electronic modules or parts coming from the usual three suppliers in China. It's eBay, AliExpress or Banggood. I show you what I buy and what I think about these items. This way you might find something interesting to inspire you for your next project or it might help you stay away from the really bad stuff. For each of the items shown in this video you will find links in the description below. My first item is this uh, set of 5 automotive test pins. Let's get them out of the uh, anti-static bags. I'm not sure why they used an anti-static bag because uh, I'm pretty sure these are not sensitive to a static discharge. So the set has a part number, it's a P8002 and inside the set you get these five test pins in five different colors but they also include 10 spare tips because uh, these uh, sharp tips are removable, they have a thread. So I guess when you wear them out, uh, you can exchange the tip. On the other end, these uh, test uh, pins, they take a standard 4mm banana jack. As you can see, it's uh, quite a uh, tight fit and you can use these um, with a pair of standard test leads. These feel uh, sharp and uh, strong enough. They feel like they could uh, puncture through the insulation of a wire and they were showing a picture of that on the product page. You can probe through a wire just by puncturing the insulation. That makes sense when probing automotive circuits because you might have a uh, wiring harness and you don't want to start cutting wires and um, ripping off the insulation to test them. So it could be just a matter of uh, inserting this uh, test pin through a wire and I need to be really careful here not to stab myself uh, in front of the camera. So yeah, it was uh, quite easy to, to go through the insulation of this wire. So let's check what kind of connection. Yeah, I'm using the... Uh, I'm using the Anang uh, AN8009. This is the uh, latest model. And uh, as you can see, we get quite a good connection by going through the middle of the wire because you go right through the middle of all of the uh, strands of wire uh, which are packed very tight in there and uh, it makes a good connection with the test pin. I paid something like uh, $7 with free shipping for uh, this set of 5 test pins and I think they're going to be very useful someday when I do some uh, troubleshooting on a uh, wiring harness or uh, anything uh, similar where you would need uh, a strong uh, pin like this that is able to puncture through the insulation of the cables. Next up I got myself a set of uh, thick 10 AWG silicone cables. I paid uh, under $7 for this uh, set on AliExpress and uh, let's see how they feel. Yep, they are pretty soft and they feel like a nice silicone uh, insulation. Let's check the uh, ratings on these. So these are 10 AWG. They can withstand up to 200 degrees Celsius, which is uh, quite normal for silicon insulated wires. And inside we can see there are quite a few uh, strands of wire. Judging by the color, they might be tin plated uh, copper wires, but you can never be sure with these uh, wires coming from China. If you, you really need to know the composition of your cable, you need to get it from a trusted uh, source, but that will probably cost you way more. I plan to use these for the uh, wiring on a uh, modified uh, 12 volts uh, server power supply. If you remember my fuse uh, testing videos, I needed a much higher rated 12 volts rail for properly testing those uh, fuses. 
So I got a server power supply which is capable of uh, 50 amps at 12 volts. I will do a video soon on how I uh, modify that power supply to use it on the bench. Next up I got uh, this guy which is a uh, wire thickness uh, gauge tool. As you can see it comes with a uh, pouch for storage. It's not very good quality but hey it has a pouch for storage and um, you get both AWG and the SWG um, markings on this uh, gauge tool. You can use this tweak you can use this to uh, quickly find out the uh, gauge of a particular wire. It's made uh, all out of metal, so it should last you a lifetime. And I think it was uh, uh, cut using a uh, water jet machine. The edges do feel a bit sharp, so you need to be careful not to cut yourself with this. The tool is uh, fairly inexpensive. I paid uh, something like $4, shipping included. So it can't hurt to have one of these in your toolbox. My next item is a bore scope type camera and uh, I've always wanted to have one of these for those jobs where you need to pick in a place where a normal camera would not fit. During the past couple of years these got very cheap and now you can find something like this for $9 shipping included. Don't expect uh, professional grade uh, quality, but for the hobby level it's great and uh, it doesn't break the bank. The great thing about uh, one of these is that it supports uh, both PC and Android devices, so it's pretty easy uh, to uh, connect this to an Android tablet or smartphone because everyone has one of those. Uh, I believe there are also models designed to work with iOS devices but I opted for uh, this one which works with Android devices. Inside the um, box you also get a couple of accessories. There are these um, hooks that you can uh, attach to the end of the camera and uh, I believe this one is magnetic. Yeah, it might have a magnet in there. So you can insert the camera and maybe pick up a uh, lost or dropped item from a tight space. and. Uh, you also get uh, one of these attachments with a, a 45 degrees angle camera so you can maybe peek around the corner. But what's truly interesting is uh, this connector that will allow you to uh, connect it basically to a PC to a regular type A uh, USB connector but then you can flip this bit like this and it's a micro USB connector that will allow you to uh, plug it into a smartphone for example. So uh, the smartphone needs to support uh, these kinds of uh, accessories and supply power over the uh, uh, USB port but in this case you can see uh, this smartphone does that. And uh, there is this uh, camera Fi application and I can see that it automatically launched the app as a, uh, a connected the camera. It's a free app. And now, as you can see, there is a bit of uh, delay in uh, processing the uh, image. But uh, it looks really good. I mean, uh, yep, yeah, this is me shooting the video. And this is uh, the quality that I'm getting from this camera. It's pretty decent quality um, considering that you'll only use this for inspection. So you have a couple of different options in here. You can uh, capture images, you can capture video and I haven't um, looked through the uh, rest of the rest of the options but the basic stuff is there. And another interesting thing you can use the the button right here on the uh, USB connector to turn on or off the LEDs uh, on the uh, end of the camera and even control a few steps of uh, brightness which is uh, pretty cool. This uh, particular model is uh, 8 millimeters in diameter with a uh, 2 megapixel resolution but as you can see here on the box you can also get uh, some thinner ones and uh, on with, with a 5 megapixel camera or a 10 megapixel camera. I believe you can get all of these uh, options if you search the web. 
you also need to consider the camera has a fixed focus so you can't really focus on very on objects which are which are very near to the camera but uh, with a bit of hacking that uh, focus distance uh, might be uh, adjustable from this uh, camera so in the end I'm pretty happy with uh, what I got and I'm sure this will uh, save me some trouble uh, someday uh, when I need uh, a view inside an, an enclosure or when you're doing some automotive wiring jobs uh, this will for sure be useful in a, in a project. My next item is a set of uh, 5730 LEDs. I got five colors uh, in uh, this kit each set is 20 pieces so I have 100 LEDs in total. It's nice to have sets of LEDs and I keep several of these uh, in the lab in different sizes. Here I have 0603 and 0805 SMD LEDs. Here I have uh, 3 mm and uh, 5 mm LEDs in different colors because you never know when you're going to need some uh, LEDs for a repair or a project. And it's nice to have all of these options available instead of waiting for them to be delivered. These days LEDs are cheap enough that you can just keep them on stock in different sizes and colors. For example this set was under $2 shipping included so you'll not break the bank by keeping a few of these in stock. Of course these will not be the good quality LEDs from Osram or any other well-known manufacturer they will be made by the one hang low LED factory in China but that shouldn't matter much as long as you use these for hobby projects. I wouldn't use the one hang low uh, LEDs for any serious projects certainly not for something you would sell because uh, then you might get reliability and quality issues. My next item is a uh, GPS module and uh, inside it should be a uh, Neo M8N module from Ublox which is a, a nice module. It supports uh, connecting up to three navigation systems at the same time. So you could be getting data from GPS, uh, GLONASS and Galileo, uh, which increases the coverage and precision of the system. This module is a bit special because it also has a magnetometer inside and that is to help with the uh, flight controller systems uh, of drones or UAVs. So you basically got two connectors here, uh, one is for power and uh, UART, TX and RX and the other one is for uh, the I2C interface to the uh, magnetometer. Since I got this for a lower price than usual, I paid just uh, $15 for the module, I will open the case just to check we have the uh, uh, correct uh, GPS module inside. By the way, this is my... Um, we have the Xiaomi Weha screwdriver set um, which I absolutely love. I showed this uh, in an earlier in the mail. I got it for about $20 uh, shipping included but it was on discount uh, that day and it just uh, screams quality when compared to other uh, $15 to $20 sets of uh, screwdrivers. I will also put a link to this in the description below so you can check it out. So it appears they are using the uh, correct uh, M8N uh, Neo module from Ublox. So uh, here we have the magnetometer I was telling you about. So now I can be confident that I got what I uh, paid for. And uh, I will be using this for uh, one of my RC airplane builds. But um, I showed this uh, module uh, in this video because you really can use this for anything and it's a great GPS module that uh, many people might be interested in. Next item is a uh, rather interesting uh, fan controller I found. Inside the package you will get uh, this board and a couple of uh, 10k thermistors with uh, JST connectors. So the way it works the board takes an 8 to 60 volts uh, DC input as specified on the PCB and the same voltage you supply the board is used to power uh, these two fan outputs so the input voltage of the board has to be correlated to the working voltage of the fan not to exceed that because uh, uh, the magic smoke will escape from the fans you are using 
the board takes these two thermistor inputs from uh, these two uh, pins and uh, converts the temperature to degrees C. The range is uh, minus 10 up to 100 degrees Celsius. And with these uh, two temperatures, it offers you two controlled outputs independent uh, for fans that support the PWM input. So those are the ones with uh, four wires because two wires are used to supply power to the fan. The third wire is the TACO output for measuring RPM. And the fourth wire is the PWM input for the motor driver on the fan itself. So it kind of looks like this, a fan that has uh, the uh, PWM input. The board offers the uh, possibility to set some thresholds. And uh, let me just power the board and show you a few things. There we go. So I have uh, the two thermistors connected and a fan connected on the fan one output. So the board by default will cycle through the two channels. It will show you the temperature in degrees Celsius as well as the RPM. So right now we're seeing 27.6 degrees, zero RP RPM on fan two, 27.4 degrees Celsius and 700 RPM on um, fan one. And uh, there are two thresholds that you can set, a lower threshold and a higher threshold. And between those two, the board will just ramp up the uh, RPM, which is basically the duty cycle output on that uh, PWM pin. It will ramp that from 10% up to 100% in a linear fashion. You can also set an alarm threshold. And if you connect a buzzer to uh, this output right here, you will get an audible alarm once that uh, threshold is uh, surpassed. The circuit controlling all of this is uh, an STM8S uh, microcontroller, which makes it very easy to hack. So you could potentially use this as a development platform to create your own custom fan controller. And this is something I like about newer modules coming from China. They use uh, STM microcontrollers more and more. We see the STM8, we see the STM32 quite often, and this is a great thing for hackability. This fan controller is uh, fairly inexpensive at under $10 with uh, free shipping and a link will be provided in the description below. That was all for today. Thank you for watching this video. If you found anything interesting, uh, you will find the links to each of the products shown in this video in the description below. And there will also be a link to the Vodlog channel if you'd like to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.